The Mom Hour is brought to you by partners like The Essential Calendar. The Essential Calendar makes beautiful, minimalist, poster-sized calendars that show an entire season at a glance so you can see and plan for the big picture. If you're looking ahead to 2024 and have big plans you want to see all in one place, visit theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour. You'll save 10% off your purchase when you visit that link or when you use our code themomhour at checkout. Again, that's 10% off our favorite seasonal calendars at theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour. Hi, I'm Megan. And I'm Sarah. We're two moms with eight kids between us from preschool to teen. This is the show where we help you feel better about the mom you are and share our own parenting tips and personal stories. We're not experts. We're parents who've been there. We're not perfect. We're real. Welcome to the Mom Hour. Hey, everyone, and welcome to episode 161 of the Mom Hour. I'm Sarah Powers, and I am here with Megan Francis. Hey, Megan. Hey, Sarah. Good morning. You are like in Wisconsin. Can we talk about that for a second? I am. Yes, we can. So I am recording this from my hotel room in Door County, Wisconsin. I came on a media trip um, to check out the area and some of the cool stuff they have to offer here. And I got to go kayaking in Lake Michigan yesterday and like into some caves. I went on this awesome awesome hike and then ate at some really awesome restaurants. And then today I'm going to go for a, a bike ride around Peninsula State Park, which I'm excited about. So it's just been like, it's like a taking care of Megan day. I love it. Well, just so you yeah. all listeners know, we podcast wherever we are on the road because we love you guys. <laughs> yes. um, so what are we talking about today? I'm excited about this. Uh, we're calling this episode the life-changing magic of opting out. And by opting out, we mean what are the little things? The, most of these things are little. Some of them are bigger. But what are the little things that we just don't do as moms in order to make life easier? Little yeah. stuff, bigger stuff. Um, I think when you're a newer mom, it's easy to think that everybody's doing X, Y, and Z, and therefore you have to. And so with our benefit of hindsight, we've kind of realized that it's really okay to opt out of all kinds of things. And it's going to be fun. Yeah, I'm excited about this one. We are welcoming our longtime sponsor, Prep Dish, back to the show today. And listeners, if you're looking to boost your protein intake, Prep Dish is making it so easy right now. When you sign up in January, you'll get access to a month's worth of the new Prep Dish protein boost meal plans. I love this, Sarah. Protein is so important for our health. It helps support mental clarity, sleep, energy, hormone balance, and more. And as busy moms, we're often not getting enough protein, especially at breakfast. With these meal plans from Prep Dish, you'll learn how to quickly prep four protein-rich dinners and one breakfast. Right. And like all Prep Dish meal plans, they make it so simple to shop once, prep for the week ahead of time, and save time on busy weeknights by having your meals ready to heat and serve. And Megan, these meals sound so delicious and perfect for January. Listen to this. Slow cooker carnitas bowls, stuffed pepper soup, and then there's a Swiss chard mushroom and goat cheese frittata for breakfast. Okay, I am adding that stuffed pepper soup to my rotation ASAP. This is a limited time offer, so make sure to sign up before the end of January to get your free bonus meal plans. To learn more and sign up now, visit prepdish.com slash themomhour. Again, that's prepdish.com slash the mom hour for a month's worth of the new prep dish protein boost meal plans. Check it out. Sarah, you know, when someone's trying to sell me something, I can be pretty skeptical. Maybe it's my rebel tendencies, but having some healthy doubts has definitely kept me from wasting money on every cool product the algorithm sends my way. You know, what's not too good to be true though. Our sponsor ritual and their clinically backed essential for women, 18 plus multivitamin. Yeah, Megan, that's so true. We both love these vitamins because they're made with high quality and traceable key ingredients in clean bioavailable forms. And they're gentle on an empty stomach with a fresh minty essence in every bottle. So you don't have to worry about nausea if you're a bit relaxed about when you take them. I'm also a big fan of Ritual's sustainability standards. They use scientific tools to select lower carbon packaging, prioritize sustainably sourced ingredients, and set ambitious climate goals. No more shady business. Ritual's Essential for Women 18 Plus is a multivitamin you can actually trust. Get 20% off your first month for a limited time at ritual.com slash the mom hour. Start Ritual or add Essential for Women 18 Plus to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash the mom hour for 20% off. All right, we're going to launch into this. But before we do, I wanted to uh, let you guys know that Katie Addis joins me at the very end of this show with one of her fun segments about her life as a new-ish 
mom, and we know you guys love that. And um, we mentioned a couple weeks ago that we have started a blog at our website, themomhour.com, just occasional things that supplement the podcast. And so Katie is going to be doing a blog post every time she does a segment. So um, think of that as just kind of a little add on to her segment, which I know our listeners love. And you just head to themomhour.com and look for the blog, which is easy to find. And then um, there will be a new post from Katie um, that kind of goes along with her segment, which is fun. I that. love that we're blogging again. I know. It feels like so old school. Like the olden days. <laughs> I know. It's great. I love it. I love it. Okay. Um, so this idea of opting out, I feel like I have a disclaimer first, and then maybe we have some kind of high-level thoughts. But my disclaimer is we're going to go through several things that you and I have just decided we don't do, or we very rarely do. Um, but I don't want that to come across as like we have any judgment about anyone else doing it. Because the whole point right. of opting out to me is like figuring out the things that don't add value to your life as a mom and figuring out a way to not do them or outsource them. And we'll talk about that. Um, But like, there's several things that I don't do that if the mom down the street does, I think that's amazing. And I I don't know, I feel like we've said this before, but it it bears repeating because um, it's totally okay if you are 100% into something that we've opted out of. I totally agree. And I will say two things. One, I, some of the things that I opted out of was more about me just never getting around to doing them or finding myself always resisting them and then finally making peace with that. So it's right. not like it's not like I went into each one of my opt outs like I therefore claim that I shall <laughs> opt out of X, Y, Z. It was more like I found every time this thing rolled around this time of year or whatever this activity was, I just wasn't into it. Or when I did it, I felt like I didn't do a good job or took away from something else I wanted to do more. And then so I kind of backed into a lot of these. And right. I think to your point, Sarah, um, we can't all do all the things. No. And but it's so easy to look around and see the cumulative. Yes. Um, like the cumulative results of many people doing many things. Right. And to think that that means every mom is doing all of them. And, and that's yes. not that's not true. Like, it's just not the case. So just because there are beautiful photos um, that one mom took of, like, say, a recital and you got there late and you were sitting so far in the back and then you forgot to take your camera out or whatever. You know what yeah. I mean? Like that doesn't mean like literally every mom was doing it. It means that like a couple did. And yeah. so there's just, that's just like one kind of example off the top of my head. But I just feel like we, we tend to think that everyone's doing all of it. And I it's agree. just not true. And then by, but by like either deciding ahead of time to opt out or by embracing the fact that you already kind of by default did and just yes. give yourself some grace. Like you just take some of that guilt away from it you do and And yeah yeah I was gonna say that as well like it's just a mental shift but instead of feeling guilty that you're not doing something you've just internally declared that you don't do that thing and let me say something else I think it's really good for our kids to see us setting boundaries and we're going to talk about really silly stuff so I feel like we're making this into a bigger deal than it is but it's not bad for our kids to see us setting boundaries and saying like oh you know I don't do that or I you know I've found a way for someone else to do that and it's not super healthy for our think our kids to think that we are all powerful and can do everything I think it's really good for kids to see us making choices about where and how to spend our time I totally agree. And I also, before we launch it, I want to say one quick thing about judgment, because I know it's so hard to go through your life as a mom without worrying that people are noticing every move you make and judging every move you make. And I think people really don't notice the things you don't do as much as you think that they do. I mean, they might notice the things you do do, especially if you make a big deal about it. But like, if you're just not at something like some event, or if you didn't um, say dress your kid in like tie dye on tie dye day or whatever it is. Yeah. You know, most of the time people are not going to go out of their way to notice. No, and I, I yeah, <laughs> and they've all got their own stuff going on. Like exactly. everyone's already, everyone's thinking we're all thinking about ourselves and exactly. our own families most of the time and worrying that people are looking at us. So we're not really looking at what you are doing or not doing. And so you know, and if someone does judge you for it, like that's on them. Like that's on them. Not everyone's opinion has to matter to you either. Well, not not only that, but they are probably noticing the things you're doing and thinking they're falling down on the job. Like it goes both ways. So yes, absolutely. Um, Okay. So these are going to be fun. Um, I think we're going to do, we're just going to go back and forth and do a few each that we'll take a break as we usually do. And then we'll keep on going. So do you want me to go first? Yeah, you go first, Sarah. Okay. So this is one that if you are a serious longtime listener, you've heard me talk about before because it's in our summer shortcuts episode from a long time ago. But this was a big opt out moment for me because it kind of happened all at once. And that is I have opted out of folding pajamas 
ever, uh-huh. forevermore. <laughs> and it happened, never I think, do it. probably with my third kid. And I just had this, I mean, I'm always behind in folding clothes. I think every mom is folding or putting away or getting the kids to put away. But I just had this moment where I was like, wait a second. <laughs> Why am I folding pajamas? Like they just go in a drawer and the kids put them on for bed. Like I'm not worried about wrinkles. Anyway, so all my kids have a pajama drawer where there's no folding happening, but it actually gave me permission to opt out of a few other things that I don't fold. I don't fold my workout, my own fitness wear. Um, trying to think if there's anything else. I mean, I don't fold underwear, but maybe if you do, that's totally cool. But I think hopefully a lot of moms have opted out of folding underwear. But um, I also don't fold some of my linens, like dish rags and stuff like that. Um, so opting out of folding certain laundry items that don't need to be folded. So Sarah, you know that I'm really, really laid back about most stuff. But you love but folding. I'm, I'm just picturing drawers full of like just random things and it's giving me a little bit of like skeevies <laughs> so I will say that my kids clothes are curated pretty well so there's not a lot yeah. of like extra there's not outgrown yeah. stuff in there there's not out of season stuff in there it's only the it's stuff no, it's, that it's, yeah. it's the workout wear where you started to lose me but that's okay oh this yeah is, I'll text you about a, your choice I'll text this you a picture <laughs> of the drawer and you will or like the the, the, the linens are they just yeah. like stuffed in the drawer? I mean, so okay. I have baskets. I am not judging. Oh, you I have baskets. I have baskets in a big cupboard and the 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 cleaning rags, like the dirty, like the ones that you actually like, you know, cl- hardcore cleaning rags. Yeah. Those don't get folded at all. I do try to fold the dish towels, but I don't always. Just because um, they're big. That's what I'm thinking. You know, they're just big. Right. I just have these bins and I think my cabinet <laughs> space is pretty generous. <laughs> That's See, you're awesome. judging me already. I'm not judging you at all, actually. I don't care. Like, I I truly do not care what you do with your, um, any foldables Yeah, can all become unfoldable. I'm just laughing because I'm thinking, I'm also thinking about my six foot one kid who likes to wear footy pajamas. Yeah, that would be a lot of jumble. And I'm just, just a lot of material. But, you know, sometimes I just roll them. I don't know. Yeah. I They have to be in some way contained because the feet themselves are like enormous yeah and they have those rubberized bottoms yeah but sometimes I just grab them by the feet and then like tuck the feet and roll them yeah that works so, also yeah. have you ever seen the way like a four or five year old goes through a drawer of clothes like it, oh yeah it basically just like it becomes hurricane. unfolded immediately yes so yes okay yes, so totally. that was my first one opting out of well, folding pajamas and yeah. other things do not take my my questions as judgment <laughs> they were just I'm just learning I'm learning from You're you learning right now ways. Yes. Um, Okay. So the first one I will say is um, volunteering in school, but specifically school parties. So I have no problem with volunteering in school when I have time to do that. I know like you this year decided you were going to volunteer in the library Mm -hmm. and you're really enjoying that. I think that's like a great way to kind of be present without having to be around a bunch of little children. Mm hmm. I mean, I know you're around them, but you don't I have am, to, but like, I don't have to manage them. They're managed exactly. by their teachers and I get to just read to them and, and check out their see, books. Yeah. Exactly. Anything reading to out loud related, I'm, I'm happy to do all yeah. those things. But I don't do school parties for several reasons. First of all, the first couple times I did do school parties, I realized like that's the event of the year where all of the parents want to volunteer. Mm-hmm. So there's too many parents. Mm-hmm. And then everyone's awkwardly standing around which is like my definition of hell. I mean, like everyone's awkwardly standing around, not knowing what to do. There's no room. Kids are wandering up, asking me questions. I can't answer. Um, It's hot. Like every, cause the room is so overcrowded. I would always end up having to cut things, which I'm terrible at. Like (laughs) cut out. I'm just really bad at it. Like cut out little shapes and things. Like I would always get, end up in charge of something like that. And I just one day was like, they don't need me. I I am in the way right yeah. now. Like I am not, you know, part of the solution. Yeah. So I just stopped doing school parties. And I know some parents, that's like when they can kind of. I think for some parents, it's like an easy time because it's like, okay, there's a party coming up. I yeah, get it's off on the work. calendar if they're it's full-time on the calendar. Working. Yeah. yeah, and it's an easy thing to get off work for. It's like what your boss is probably going to say. Okay, it's yeah. like you know what I mean. So I get why so many parents turn out, but because so many others do, I don't have to. And I just decided, nope, not doing that anymore. I love it. I'm a, I'm just with you on that. I don't do school parties either. <laughs> but um, okay, my next one is kind of a bigger one, but it was another like kind of big opt out mo- moment. Um, and we could do a whole episode on this, so I'll keep it short. But I, my family has opted out of homework in the lower grades. Yeah. And instead of feeling guilty about terrible worksheet packets, um, that, and I'm talking about like kindergarten, first, second grade here. Um, I realized that a few, I realized a few things. 
One, many teachers actually believe the same things that I do about homework, which is that they don't believe it's super helpful or necessary, but they're giving it either because it's mandated by the district or because they think parents want it. That was like a big realization for me is that I'm not I'm in the minority that many parents want to see work coming home from school so they can check progress. And that's fine. Again, you do you. But once I realized that it wasn't really um, that important to the teacher in a lot of cases. Um, and I know that the research backs that it's not important to my children's academic future. I just decided that in our family, we don't we don't prioritize homework in the lower grades. I won't even say we don't do it because sometimes there's like a fun project or something that comes home that my kid wants to do. And that's fine. But I opted out of sitting with math worksheet homework with first and second graders um, and I don't do it. And this past year was the first year that I actually wrote to the teacher at the beginning of the year to politely let her know that we don't, again, I, I didn't say we don't do homework. I just said that I don't, um, I don't prioritize it. I, I offer it as an option, but I don't supervise. I don't um, make my child do it. It's not a requirement in our family and therefore it may or may not come in. And you know what? Homework doesn't count for grades in the lower grades. Yeah. Like I said, many times the teacher, it's not even um, like of core importance to them. And it may be. So it may be worth a conversation with the teacher. But um, it was so freeing. And um, I don't know. So fourth grade, Allegra, fourth grade, that was different. I have, you know, different opinions about homework as they get a little bit older. And I think the homework itself changes. It was more that she was finishing an essay she'd started in class and needed my editing help. And it felt more meaningful than the arbitrary packets, but didn't, didn't we talk to a uh, teacher? Didn't we do a whole episode where we talked to a teacher and I can't remember if it was the voices or what? Are you thinking of, so you interviewed Heather Shoemaker a long time ago, who has done a lot of work on this. Are you thinking of that? She has a couple of books. One is you don't have to go up the slide or it's okay to go up the slide. And one is it's okay not to share. She's a pretty well-known. So I know she has. What about when we talk to Erica Ladd? Did we talk about homework then? No, she's a kindergarten teacher. Um, That's right. Well, hey, some kindergartens give homework. Right. I'm sure our good friend Erica Ladd, who's listening right now, is anti-homework for kindergartners. I'm going to just go ahead and speak on her behalf. Um. So yeah, that was very freeing for me. I had no backlash from, I've had no backlash from teachers. And quite honestly, if I did, I don't think I'd change my mind. I think I approach it yeah. in a way that's respectful to the teacher. Um, and also, I don't want my kids to, I don't want my kids to think that I'm like flouting school authority. Like we don't right. do homework. I don't really, I don't really present it like that, but I do, I do draw a pretty hard line. Like yeah. in our, in our family, homework is totally optional in the lower grades. That's how I put so, it. So so I think this is interesting because um, I was lucky with most of my kids that they just didn't have a lot of homework in the younger grades. Um, I do remember there being an incident with Clara having some homework that I don't even know was really homework. I kind of feel like it's schoolwork she didn't get done in mm. school. She tended to stress about stuff a lot. Yeah, and, she like, probably was the one it. thinking she had to do it because yes, of her personality. She brought stuff home and then would, you know, kind of freak out because she didn't really know how to do it that well. Mm-hmm. And I remember texting her teacher one night and just saying, Claire's in tears. Like, I don't know what to do. And she's like, then stop Yeah, <laughs> there. You know, schoolwork should never cause tears was, yeah. were her exact words. But other than that, I don't have a lot of memories of lots of homework. What I do, what all of my kids have had a lot of, and what is kind of my like, meh is the like supplemental computer program stuff oh. they're supposed to do online. All of my kids have had some level of expectation that they're going to get on IXL or Whatever these different, there's like oh, a, we have five or six that. of them. I and opt out hard on that. <laughs> so the way I handled it, the way I kind of have handled it is like, hey, Owen, or hey, Clara, because they're, they're the only ones still in elementary school. If you want to do this, oh, yeah. actually, no, Owen's not in elementary school. He's in middle school now. So he's doing his own thing. If you want to do this, go ahead. Uh, I'm not going to make you. I'm not going to monitor it. But if you want to, I will make sure you have quiet time at a computer yeah. to work on it. And some of my kids have been like, nope. And they've taken the I'm picking I'm putting consequences in air quotes right now, because the consequences were the teacher would like put a little note on their log and say, hey, I noticed you didn't do this. And then I would ignore it. And that was fine. Yeah. Um, Clara cared more. So she would start because it uh, was on her reading log and her reading log. She's always got like tons of minutes because she reads a lot. Okay. And then below that, there's like a section for IXL and those things to do at home. And like she didn't like that the reading section looked totally flushed out and good. And right. the other section looked like right. she was slacking. So she was more motivated to do it. So I 
God, especially third and fourth grades. I feel like, you know, it is becoming like homework's becoming more important, but those are those things that feel arbitrary to me. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, so, it's arbitrariness yeah. that that feels yes. really lame with schoolwork. Like you have to yeah. do 30 minutes a week of this just yeah. of anything just because we need to have 30 minutes to check off. I just right. I don't love that. Well, so, and, you know, yeah. again, a lot of times I think the schools are providing these tools because it, it can be helpful for parents depending on the kid and depending on the family. It's just that not every right. tool is helpful in Equally your family. Helpful. And that's what, and <laughs> right. I'm glad you brought up reading logs because I think you can also, if you wanted, you could totally opt out of reading logs by oh, saying and a, lot, a lot of parents do. Yeah, yeah. Just by saying, Hey, you know, here's how, and I would do it like in an email at the beginning of the year, like here's how reading works in our family. It's part of our bedtime routine, or this is when my kid reads and I'm, I'm really comfortable with the amount that they're reading and we won't be sending in a weekly reading log. I would, that's a, totally something I would do. I mean, that was yeah. part of the homework packet this last year for read. So it was all, under the same banner of opting out of homework, but yeah. yeah. Um, All right. Your turn. Well, I'll jump into mine. Um, So I opt out of Christmas cards, but sending Christmas cards, I'll still receive them. (laughs) I opt out. I throw them Um, away when they arrive. If I get them, I just won't even look. I'm like, like, who is this family? Return to sender. (laughs) I, um, but here's the the trick. I do randomly send them like once every three or four years, (laughs) just because I'll be like, I'll be at the store and I'll see a Christmas card I think is really beautiful or something. And I'll just get kind of like a bug to sit down and write nice letters. And I have never done the photo type. Maybe once we don't do photo cards in my family. If there's anything I don't do, it's not even Christmas cards. I don't do photo cards. I just don't. I don't ever feel like I have cute enough pictures. I don't want to sit down and put it together. It doesn't do anything for my artistic side whatsoever. Like, no. And you have to order them ahead of time, which I never do. So I just don't. I just don't. That's what I opt out of, really. So if I send you a Christmas card, it's most likely going to be me sitting down writing you like a, like an actual letter mm-hmm. on a purchased card. And I may slip in my kids' school pictures if I bought them this year, which I probably didn't. And that's another which thing we'll talk about. Stay tuned for that opt out. <laughs> stay tuned. Um, but honestly, it's just like it, at the holidays, I don't want another obligation. I know that I get tons of Christmas cards and I love getting them. But I probably wouldn't notice if I didn't get one from you next year. Right. Sorry. Sorry to say. Um, it's okay. You know, like, I just think that that's one of those things that's like an obligation we all feel like we have to do. But really, if you never do it or if you just do it every few years or if you send a New Year's card instead of yeah. a Christmas card or if you send a random letter sometime during the year or an electron, kids, like an email, like one big mass email or something like that. Like, I just feel like there's other ways to reach out to people and it doesn't have to be Christmas cards. Totally agree. And that's a great example of something that I go pretty all in on. I, I love photography. I love taking pictures of my own kids. I love yeah. designing cards. I love stationery and ordering it. I love doing things ahead of time on a schedule. So like all of the things that you mentioned are not an issue for me. And I really love them. So that's a great example of what we were talking about where like, there's no, it's not a judgment call. It's purely right. like, and, and there's other things around the holidays that I totally don't do, but the cards I do and the photo cards I do. Yeah. So. And, but all those reasons are why you should do it. Exactly. And I do them on time and all the stamps match and I love mm. it so much. Wow. <laughs> nope. <laughs> okay. I'll do one more quick one and then we'll take okay. our break. Um, So this is kind of funny. I, opted out, especially with my second and third kid, I opted out of like traditional baby food. And what's funny about that is now everyone's doing baby led weaning, which is basically in a nutshell. And I, mean, I know that's exactly like, what you did. <laughs> yes, exactly yeah. what I did. But in a nutshell, you're you're feeding your baby what you're eating and just in, you know, making sure it's like age appropriate bites. But there's a lot less concerns now about allergies and introducing one vegetable for three days at a time. And of course, there's still there's still guidelines. So don't just like give your baby like, you know, a piece of pizza when they're four months old. But there's a lot fewer prescriptive guidelines than there was 10 years ago. And I hated jar baby food. I also hated making my own baby food. So I just didn't really do it with babies number two and three. And I just found ways to feed them I wish I'd had the permission to really feed them what we were eating, but I still thought I was supposed to follow kind of the food introduction progression. Yeah. But I just found ways to do it that were not baby food. So yeah. I don't know, like just little tiny bits of apple, um, but mm-hmm. I didn't steam it or mash it. I just gave them little teeny tiny bits of apple or a vegetable or I don't know, little. T- I remember doing little tiny pieces of whole wheat bread and hummus and just kind of smearing it on the tray and letting them go to town or avocado or banana. And again, that's what everyone is doing now anyway. But yeah. I really felt at the time 
Like I would just walk the, the aisles of the grocery store and kind of skip the baby food section, even though I had babies of that age. I just didn't do it. Yeah. I, I this is why one of the reasons I'm um, thankful for having fallen in with the gang of crunchy moms because they've been doing that forever. Baby led weaning was a thing 20 yeah. years ago for me. So right. like I think I bought baby food for Jacob. Yeah. And I shoveled it into his face and <laughs> like, you know, he spat it all over the place. And I was like, well, this is dumb. And then after that. <laughs> Pretty much after that, it was like, you know, first food was a tiny chunk of avocado. Yeah. Kind of smushed up or like yeah. banana smushed up. Um, sometimes with a spoon, sometimes without. Um, sometimes self-fed. I think I was waiting for, I think pretty much after Isaac, I was waiting for them to be able to do the pincher grasp and oh, like almost feed themselves. Exactly. And so, that's, that's yeah. like part of my opting out too, is I couldn't stand yeah. sitting there with a spoon. So it had to be yeah. self-fed almost like from the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. It just reminds, it's so funny how like things come in and out of fashion. It just, it's just like, you look back over 20 years of me as a mom, what was like everybody doing 20 years ago? What were some people doing 20 years ago? How long did it take some people to start doing the other thing? You yeah. know, it's like, <laughs> yes, it's yes, just the waves. so funny to see. Yeah. The waves. And like, I don't even know where everyone falls with like V-backs, but I remember like every time I got pregnant and I didn't ever have a cesarean, but I was always curious. Yeah. Every pregnancy, I would kind of like feel the waters to see how people felt about V-back. And I swear Mm -hmm. from pregnancy to pregnancy, it was different every time. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, that's just one example or like gestational diabetes testing all these things. Like how early should you have your first ultrasound? Um, everything from pregnancy on either flip flopped or slowly arced. Yeah. <laughs> and like came. So, you know, in 10 years, if you're listening to this and it's 10 year, it's tw- the year 2028. Maybe <laughs> baby led weaning is out and yeah. everyone's feeding their babies rice cereal again. I don't know. You know, it's, it's just they all they they all turn out. Well, I'm not going to say they all turn out. OK, that's you can't say that. But like yeah. most of the time, the way you do things is going to be fine. And totally. Agreed. It's going to change. I, I found that um that like six to nine months phase of feeding a baby really sort of confusing. And I think the the opting out in the second and third kid was freeing for me because yeah. they were still on breast milk as their primary source of nutrition. I, di- I knew I didn't like spoon feeding. So that was kind of out. And I didn't have the time because it was my second and third kid. I didn't have the time to like be super intentional about, okay, today's sweet potato day. I'm going to make right. sure it's smashed up. So I, I just... I just didn't. And again, it comes back to that. Like, am I feeling guilty about this or am I just deciding that this is the way I'm feeding my baby? Right. And especially by the third kid, I don't even remember what she ate until she could just eat what we were eating. Do you remember those little things that the babies could hold in their hand that had the mesh? Yeah, but they still have them. any. Do they still make? Yeah, those? but they're silicon now. So my sister was just visiting and Sydney's right in this age. And, um, they're they're like a soft silicone now, so they're even better because the mesh got really nasty. The mesh did get nasty, but those were awesome because you were, could just like throw a chunk of apple yeah. and let your baby figure it out. And yes. then just mash it and like they yeah. were amazing. And you could also put ice or frozen fruit in there if they were teething. Yep. Um, so they they have them and they look almost exactly the same. But the one that my sister had is like a soft silicone with little holes, which just made it way easier to clean. So are those still like a one step ahead thing or can you get those anywhere? I, I remember think, those were the uh, yeah, one step I'm ahead sure my, we'll have my sister just give us a link for the show notes. Can you do that, Kathy? Um, <laughs> and then <laughs> um, but I'm sure they are everywhere. I was very excited yeah. to see they are still a thing. Well, Megan, I've been wearing Vionic shoes for over three years now, but this month, my trusted shoe brand and I entered a new phase of our relationship, international travel. Well, Sarah, that is a serious commitment, <laughs> right? You can't just pack any shoe for a trip abroad. It's got to be stylish enough for those major cosmopolitan cities. It's got to be sturdy enough for trains, planes, buses, and city streets. And obviously, it's got to be comfortable enough to support your feet over many, many miles of walking. Well, no surprise, my Vionics were up to the task. I had two pair with me, a pair of casual sneakers in a cool gray color, and then a weatherproof suede ankle boot that I swear still looks brand new after 10 days on soggy sidewalks. Megan, the only time my feet hurt the entire trip was New Year's Eve when I made the mistake of wearing a pair of booties not from Vionic. So I'll just leave that data right here for you. Okay, well, that's pretty conclusive, Sarah. Vionic has the best curated styles to get you ready for whatever 2024 has in store, whether it's jet setting like Sarah or keeping up with busy mom life on this side of the pond. They even offer a 30 day guarantee, wear them, love them or return them for a full refund within 30 days. And we've got a great deal for you. 
Use code the Mom Hour 15 at checkout for 15% off your entire order at Vionicshoes.com when you log into your account. That's a one-time use only. Bionic Shoes, wearable well-being for your feet. Sarah, when my kids were little, I was always pretty torn on whether to give them a daily multivitamin. I knew that modern kids' diets have some pretty big nutritional gaps, but I also knew that most children's vitamins are basically candy in disguise. They're filled with sugar, they have all kinds of chemicals and preservatives in them, and I was like, why would I give these to my kids? Luckily, two dads recognized the problem and came up with a solution, Haya, the pediatrician-approved, super-powered, chewable vitamin. Haya fills in the most common gaps in modern children's diets to provide the full-body nourishment our kids need with a yummy taste they love. Formulated with the help of nutritional experts, Haya is pressed with a blend of 12 organic fruits and veggies, then supercharged with 15 essential vitamins and minerals, including vitamin D, B12, C, zinc, folate, and many others to help support immunity, energy, brain function, mood, concentration, teeth, bones, and more. Your first shipment comes with a cute bottle that has fun stickers your kids can use to decorate it too. My kids always loved that. And we've worked out a special deal with Haya for their best-selling children's vitamin. Receive 50% off your first order. To claim this deal, go to HayaHealth.com slash MomHour. This deal is not available on their regular website. Go to H-I-Y-A-H-E-A-L-T-H dot com slash mom hour and get your kids the full body nourishment they need to grow into healthy adults. All right. Should we jump back in? Now, whose turn is it? Mine? Yeah, it's your turn. All right. So, oh, yeah. (laughs) Well, because uh, if you do get a school picture slipped into your Christmas card that you may get um, once every three to five years, if you're lucky, if I have your address and bought enough stamps. See all the the caveats I'm giving right now? Um. If you have a school picture, it is a very special year because I only order school pictures once in a while now. Um, I very rarely order them in the fall. I am very rarely together enough to have my kids dressed well and to remember to like make sure that they all have good hair that day because <laughs> our fall pictures are always like the first week of school. Yeah, I'm, sorry. And I'm still like they, easing in. They, they, they keep moving them earlier, it feels yes. like to me. Sometimes but. they're like on the first or second day now. Oh my gosh. So that's it's just ridiculous. Criminal. So I don't buy them because A, I can take better pictures, frankly, than most of the way these turn out. B, I think the packages are put together so none of the packages make anyone happy. So it's like a cash grab because they're like put together these awkward packages yeah, that nobody yeah, really yeah. wants. You always have to order like an add-on. And they're so, so, so expensive. Now, in, at my school, at my kids' schools, they do another like kind of optional one in the in the spring mm-hmm. where they do like more fun poses and they have like different backgrounds. I have ordered those more often than the fall ones. That's because, funny because that's yeah. the one I usually opt out of is the spring. So, well, the, the, by that time of year, I feel like I'm just more with it. And also it's usually something that kind of appeals to the kids. And like, I don't know, for whatever yeah. reason, and I'm, I'm not, I don't do it every year. And I used to get really mad because for a while they would take everyone's spring pictures and then send home a package yes. of the yes. pictures. And you Our had preschool to like, does that. send them back. And I yes. found that offensive. It they don't do offensive. that anymore. They don't do that anymore. Now they just, you opt in. Like you either, you purchase a package ahead of time if you want your kids to have their pictures yes. taken. And I've having that, too. Yeah. having that control over it makes me feel better about it. And like the fact that they're not throwing away pictures of your child that they already printed right. just because you didn't buy them. Or like, your kid what? gets them. I had that. I got, right. I got, I got. I don't know, roped into purchasing one time. I think it was first grade for Allegra because she was old enough to be like, mom, I love this picture. And exactly. they sent it home. And then yeah. I, it was an opt out. That is, that is ridiculous. Anyway, um, I think we can all like, we can all probably agree that the school picture industry is a little outdated. Yes. Um, And I just didn't want to play that game anymore. I think I that's a great out. opt out. And I would add that think about the the photo, the professional photo opt outs. There's lots of them. Like when you're at Disneyland, for example, oh, yeah. and there's like, there's pressure to get the photo, the Santa photo. I'm actually going to talk about that when I talk about a Christmas opt out in a minute, but um, you don't have to buy the pictures guys. That's just a general and opt out. <laughs> you don't have to take your baby in at the three months, six months. Yes. Yes. Like, th- yeah. You don't I'm have you to take, you don't have to pose your baby every month on their month birthday with no, like you a don't. sign. No, you don't have you to don't. do any of that stuff. Like all, none of that stuff happened until <laughs> people had like internet yeah. till Instagram. And I promise you, you know, f- like earlier generations of children were not deprived because they don't have a picture of themselves sitting with a sign when they were five months old. 
totally. It's and just not a thing. The freedom of opting it, out is it makes room for you to do other things. So maybe right. there's some other way that you want to mark the passing of the new school year with a photo or maybe, but you don't have to do all the things. That's, that's right. again, we come that's back a, to that. Yeah, exactly. And I'm not trying to knock anybody who takes those pictures. They're really cute. I love seeing other people's, but I just, I, what, what I, what I am very bothered by sometimes is just the amount like the mounting pile yeah. of obligations yes. that are related to, to specific <laughs> timelines or milestones yeah. or, and there's so many of it's like, you can't even get through a day without having something you're supposed to do today because today is X day. Yeah. You know, and I don't know. I hear you. Blah. Yeah. No. Yeah. And you can opt out of all of these things. Um, okay. So my turn. Yes. Your turn. Um, okay. So, this is another one we've covered in a past episode, but I'm going to bring it up because it's a big opt out. And that is Elf on the Shelf. And oh, yeah. I, uh, it's well documented on this show. So we don't have to talk about it for a long time. But I think I always want newer moms and moms of like one and two year olds to remember that if you do Elf on the Shelf or if you start a, any kind of holiday tradition there's other cute ones like open a book every day of advent or whatever whatever you whatever you start um once your kids are old enough to remember it is harder to stop it's not impossible you can always change your mind um but i have opted out of elf on the shelf and my kids have survived and they come home from school um wondering why we don't have an elf on the shelf and it's always a brief conversation and they move on and it has not killed christmas magic if anything i think it has helped preserve some of the christmas magic actually um and then i would extend that to we have a whole episode that i'll link to it's one of my favorite episodes we've ever done and it's all about magical creatures who visit your house Mm -hmm. so i would just say and and we do know there's little ears listening but you have the option to does you know have this experience be whatever you want for your family and there's lots of room for opting out in the land of magical night visitors yes yes i agree and like there were some that until we talked about it, I didn't even know were a thing. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I would also I mentioned the Santa photos, but we completely opted out when my kids were really little of sitting on any kind of a Santa's lap because my oldest was super, super afraid. I mean, I know I know a lot of little kids are and sometimes the crying pictures are funny and I do have some crying pictures that are funny. But my oldest was so terrified that it it wasn't like a mix of funny and cute. It would have just been torture and child abuse (laughs) now and then uh, the very first santa picture we have they were about four and two or maybe three and a half and one and a half maybe um so the oldest was was old enough and the second child never cared he was the one he never cried it was fine yeah um so but that's another one like you do not and and that's kind of like I guess an overlap between the Christmas stuff and the photo, the buying the photos. You don't you don't have to go to a mall and sit on Santa's lap. You do not have to wait in line for that action ever if you don't want to. No, I, I completely agree. And I think I did it maybe three times. Yeah. With my kids. Then I then I started years. doing it actually. We have some great Santa pictures after the first three and a half years, but I never yeah. did it before then. And for me it was always like a, oh, we're already at the mall. Oh, there's Santa. Right. The line's not too long. Let's do it. Why not? I mean, yeah. it was it was never really like a super planned thing, which I think yeah. helped keep that expectation and obligation yes. down. And that's yeah. totally how it started with us because I'd been so I mean, she was so terrified and it was so not an option for so long that the first time it was an accident like that and then the next year it was like kind of an accident and then and then I did plan it a few times because I'm not above yeah. planning a good <laughs> Santa photo. <laughs> oh, I can imagine. All right, should I do my yeah. next one? All right. So this one it sounds very specific uh cuz it is. Um the way I wrote it down was opting out of awards assemblies when your kid doesn't even want you there and you know they didn't win any awards. <laughs> but this is related to a very specific experience I just had. Um, but I do think it it can tie into a lot of different kinds of assemblies. So <clears throat> William is now a rising freshman. So he, which I just think is such a funny term. It I, is. I think I had to like think about what I meant for a second. This actually yeah. may be the first time I've ever said that out loud. Because usually when I hear it, I'm like, wait, what? What does that even mean? But it means he's going to be in ninth grade in the fall. So that means he graduated, air quotes, from eighth grade, which just means (laughs) he didn't like he didn't flunk. That's how that's what that means. He didn't get sent back to middle school. (laughs) Exactly. He's advancing to high school. Good for him. I'm very proud. Um, (laughs) I don't know why I think of that. (laughs) Well, because I mean, he didn't try that hard. This was not his most stellar academic year. 
Um, he really focused a lot on his social life, which, hey, I don't get mad at him. I do not get down on him about grades. I have like a I kind of have like a policy where unless kids are really screwing up, I don't ride them about their grades because I know what it was like to yeah. be a kid who didn't care so much about my academic achievement. And yeah. I know what a bummer it is to have parents and adults t- constantly writing you, telling you how smart you are and how much more potential you have. And you're like, yeah, I know, but I just don't care. There's other things I want to be doing. So I recognize that in William. He came a long way this year. He grew like a foot. He made some really good friends. He tried some new activities. Like he did lots of theater. He's a nice kid. He's respectful. He's helpful at home. All of those things are great. I love it. He did not try at school. Did not. He phoned it in hard. So they have an awards assembly. (laughs) It's not a graduation. They make a very big point to say it's not a graduation ceremony. It is you come and you watch kids get awards. And he didn't get any. And I knew it because he didn't even make the honor roll every. And and I'm I'm not talking hard honor roll. I'm talking like he was getting C's in classes. He should have gotten A's in. Yeah. Um, So I didn't go. And I kind of was like. There was kind of this back and forth about whether I was going to go or John was going to go. And then William was like, I don't really even care if either of you go. And then I was like, wait, why would we even go? Because he's not going to win anything. So we're going to sit there for two hours and watch all these other kids get awards. And he's going to sit with his friends. And then at the end, we're going to go home and wish we had those two hours back. So I didn't. And I guess I guess my bigger point about this is not it's not that you don't. I'm not like punishing my kid because he didn't, you know, like excel academically this year it was more like he didn't care right like why should i i'm not going to care harder than he does yeah and it felt fake to go celebrate like his achievement when it was so kind of just what everybody else did yeah <laughs> like like it's exactly what like literally every other kid in his class is also moving on so yeah, right i don't know and that makes me sound I, I feel like the way I'm, I sound grumpy about it, I'm not. I'm actually not grumpy at all. Um, I think he's an awesome kid. You probably kid he knows prevented that yourself awesome from kid. feeling grumpy about it. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it would. There's just this thing now where like, and you and I have talked about this before too, like when everybody gets an award, is it, does it mean, is it meaningful? Like right. if everybody is recognized to, and then, or almost everybody is recognized, does it mean anything for those yeah. kids. I think and, there's a lot yeah. of room for improvement in the way award <laughs> yes. ceremonies are handled. <laughs> yes, that I will. Say I may have well. sent you some really riled up text messages after one that I attended this year. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so I don't know. What do you feel like is like the, the takeaway from that? Like, as I don't want it to be like, uh, just don't. So I think that, assemblies. I think the takeaway is, especially for our younger, newer moms, if you're entering school parenting, um, it's easy to feel like, like we said at the top of the show, it's easy to feel like every parent is showing up for everything. And I'm, we're actually at a very small school where there's a ton of parent involvement and I'm very involved. So I'm there a lot, but I'm not there for everything. And I kind of, I almost feel like it's a badge of honor like I a lot of like people don't know who I am because I hide in the library and that's my volunteer job and like I make it very clear that like I the stuff that I show up for I want to really be there for um and Mm -hmm. I think if you're in an area where there's pressure to be super super involved and be there for everything at school just know that not everybody is and you might be making a full-time working single mom feel better about herself by by helping lower the bar a little bit like you know what I mean like yeah our standards can relax a little bit. I think um, nobody noticed that I wasn't there. Exactly. So yeah, including think- my sister-in-law, who's a teacher there. She had no idea that I wasn't there. She was <laughs> his teacher this year, and then that that also added like another kind of level of like, ugh, should I come? Because no, it's important to it's yeah. important to the people. It's really important to, but that doesn't mean it has to be important to everybody. Also, so, when you yeah. show up for fewer things, your kids are really excited when you're there. I will that's say that true. like it's not a given. Yeah. Um. So and I think that's everything we talked about, like school parties, field trips, whatever. Um, okay, I'll do one more quick one. And it's a, it's also a specific story. Um, and I may have even told it before, but that's okay. I'm going to tell it again. Um, Violet did dance last year when she was four. And I, because I have a dance background, I am well versed in the way of spring dance recitals. And especially the, the, like the ratcheting up that has happened in the last 10, 15 years of these big dance recitals. And you buy a really expensive costume and they make you commit in December or January for a June recital. And around here, the recitals happen after school is out. They're practically in summer when everyone is so mentally done. 
The tickets are expensive. It's just really a big commitment. And so I kind of went in knowing this. Um, I used to teach for studios like that. And I have friends with, you know, daughters. And if your daughter is totally committed or your son is totally committed to dance and this is like what you do, this is like your, you know, Little League finals equivalent, whatever, then again, awesome. But I knew going in that my four-year-old was not going to do the recital. And I opted out and there was a dozen other families who did not opt out. And we were the only ones who didn't do the recital. And it was fine. She learned the dance. She got to practice the dance with everybody because when they're four, it's not like they're doing, they don't have like places on the stage. There's no front line, back line. Like it's not like she's messing up the formation or anything. They're just practicing the routine. She practiced all the way through May. We made May our last month. The only day that was hard was when the costumes were physically handed out and tried on in class. And I knew that would be a little hard on her because she didn't get a tutu. And it was. But again, like that's a disappointment I was prepared to handle with my four year old. And it was short lived. Mm -hmm. Nothing like the extended disappointment I would have had if I had to go to a tech (laughs) rehearsal and a dress rehearsal and a three hour dance recital. Extended disappointment. (laughs) Like the extended like dismay with myself. Um. So, yeah, this is sounding grumpy, too. But again, you guys know, like, if you're excited about it, then do it. If you're not excited about it, opt out. And you can totally opt out of spring recitals. And probably there's equivalent in other um, in other after school activities, especially with the little kids. But I can't tell you how jealous the other moms were when, like, I was like, oh, no, we're done. Like, we don't have to go to those because they're passing out rehearsal schedules. And, you know, anyway, so that was a very specific opt out. But maybe it gives you an idea of something in your life that you can opt out of that is similarly. Well, I have to tell you. So I was just I went camping with my brother's family like two weekends ago. Uh huh. And. As we are getting to the campsite, my brother and their entire family had to run out real quick. I'm putting that again in air quotes to go to a cousin's dance recital. So I'm like, okay, blah, blah, blah. I'm setting up camp. I broke my camper, like blah, blah, blah. I'm texting my brother frantically. Like, when do you think this will wrap up? They were there. They were there all day. Like, that's the only way I can put it. The the recital itself lasted like three and a half hours. I couldn't believe it. Like yeah. when he, he kept texting me, like, it's still going on. I was like, what do you mean it's still going on? You've been there for hours. He's like, it's still going on. She was done. Like the girl they were there to see was done yeah. an hour and a half ago. And we're just sitting here. And he was like, I can't believe that I'm still here. I can't believe yeah. this is happening. So not only did you save yourself, Sarah, but you saved relatives. Like you saved yeah. family members. Oh, yeah. Sitting through that. And little kids like Luna. Yeah. She's little. Yeah. I had to sit there through a three and a half hour yeah dance recital with kids she doesn't know yeah oh yeah it's I mean it sounded like the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of I just couldn't even believe this was really a thing I couldn't believe it yep it turns out it is yeah good for you yep (laughs) opt out guys and that's coming from a dancer a former dancer and dance teacher well and maybe there is a better way yeah maybe if parents opt out of that kind of craziness, they'll figure out a different way to do it. Cause I just kept thinking there's gotta be a better way. Like yeah. this cannot and be I grew the up only in a studio that did not have recitals like that. We had performances. They were not the kind where you had to watch every class do a number like in a row like that. Anyway, this is like a whole, this is a whole, well, thing. right. I mean, yeah. we, this is not our option. This is not, well, this actually has been our opportunity to rant about a bunch of stuff, it is. but it turned ranty, but that's okay. It did, but that's okay. And I won't even bother with my last, um, opt out because it's so similar to yours, but I'll just say it was like opting out of going to every single game, opting out of going to every single practice, like deciding which, which activities or events are the most important for you to be at and going to those. And that's very similar to your dance recital story. Three hours. I would add opting out of going to every single birthday party. We we've talked about that recently, but just remember when those preschool invitations start coming home, you don't have to say yes. You don't have to go to all of them. Woof, this ended kind of ranty, kind of negative. Yeah, it sure did. Well, I mean, we do a lot of stuff. We love our kids. Right. We do so much stuff. We do. We maybe right. need a, um, like a, like a flip <laughs> like side episode, episode like, like all, all the, the stuff the, we do do for all the areas where we are killing it. Um, so actually that brings up, so our end of show segment is called cue it up where we recommend an episode for you guys to go listen to next. And the one I'm going to recommend is called mom superpowers mom kryptonite so go to the momhour.com i'll link it up in the show notes for this episode but we talked about what our superpowers are and our kryptonite and it's kind of along the same line of like we're killing it in some areas and phoning it in in others so i think that would be a nice compliment it's a really old episode i remember megan that was your idea 
Yeah, um, so that we was will a fun one. We will either search it up in your i in your um, podcast app or go to the momhour.com and we'll link it up in the show notes for this episode. So kryptonite superpowers. Love it. And I think we do have to have a follow up episode of the things we actually do enjoy about parenting. I know. I know. Because <laughs> maybe we, do. we should do that. We do. I mean, it's, we're not negative people. I think because we make draw these lines in the sand, we're actually happier moms. Ex- and that leads to enjoying the other stuff more. And doing the things that we really love doing more of yep. it. Totally. Um, OK, guys. So we will be back with you next week. Everything we talked about will be at the momhour.com. This was episode 161 on the life changing magic of opting out. And don't go anywhere because Katie's joining me right now. Hey, guys, it's Sarah, and I am here with Katie Addis. Hey, Katie. Hi, Sarah. Hey, everybody. So as always, Katie's here to give us an update on her life as a mom with a toddler and a preschooler now. So we're going to talk about one struggle, one success, and one discovery. So what do we have today? Well, we are going to talk about Luke's diaper changing right Mm. now to start us off. Um, Every time I think, oh my goodness, he's just growing up too fast, then I have to change his diaper. (laughs) And then you're like, please grow up faster. (laughs) Yes. Yes. So I don't remember this with Anna Lee, and I think it's because it just didn't happen as obviously, but he is just the hardest person to change a diaper on. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. Like he is wiggly. like a bucking Bronco. I mean, yeah. not even wiggly and squirmy, but fighting and combative about it and crying. Oh, and, man. and I try all the distracting techniques. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Um, you know, I'll have success with one thing. So I'll always be armed with that one thing when I go to change his diaper at whatever right. location, um, downstairs or actually on his changing table upstairs. And, uh, it's just, it's just a little irritation, you know, it's just, and then I worry about like poop going everywhere and yeah. And it's no fun. It's no fun to be locked in a battle with a kicking toddler five times a day. Oh yeah. And I feel like, I mean, down when I change his diaper downstairs, um, I have to kind of, I don't know channel my inner wrestler and um and like sit on him and try all these different techniques like I I really could be I don't know in, in what about taekwondo like, studio I mean this is like probably I know you've thought of this but like is there one thing that he would covet to just hold on to I mean an old iPhone like that kind of thing like that he only got to handle when he was getting his diaper changed because he's getting old enough to like negotiate with a little bit yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay, maybe my phone. Um, I mean, I, mean, I wouldn't want to get poop on my phone yeah, either, but yeah. I'm, something, I know that it's like a sanitation thing. I, my, the first thing that came to mind was food, hand him food yeah. and he is like content for days, but you know, he's in a compromised laying down position. True. <laughs> True. And but, then there's poop yeah. involved. I feel like there's gotta be something that was like attractive enough or coveted enough that he only got to hold or I don't know I yeah. guess it's kind of bribery but not really bribery just like it's diaper change time which means you get two minutes to whatever yeah I could I could try an old phone and just power it up and because I mean that I wouldn't worry too much yeah, about right. getting dirty so that's actually a good idea maybe I'll power up an old phone and yeah. you can and then you just have that. to be super super strict about it only being diaper changes otherwise it won't work yeah you know what I mean oh yeah like if he thinks he can get it other times then yeah. it totally won't work but if that is and it'll be such a short time I mean it'll be two minutes and then you take it away and maybe he's mad about that that you took it away but the next diaper change he might be more willing <laughs> or yeah. totally not and this might be terrible advice. <laughs> yeah which is more evil um him squirming during diaper change or the tantrum I'll get taking the right. phone well, away. Yeah. And it, yeah, you, that you will have to experiment. Yeah, with. I will experiment. Okay. Well, um, moving on, I have a little cost cutting hack nice. slash, um, discovery that just kind of dawned on me one day. So, um, we all, of course, want to protect our kids from the sun when they're mm-hmm. swimming in their, in their swim gear. So I don't know about you, Sarah, but, um, I struggle finding the zipper rash guards um, in as cute of patterns as 
rash guards that don't have zippers. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to remember. So like the zippered ones would be like the full body, like a unitard, right? Kind well, of, there are those, but then there are just the shirts. Oh, I don't think I ever saw a zippered shirt. So it's oh. like a, like a slim fitting jacket, basically like it's a, a slim, slim fitting jacket. jacket. Exactly. Okay. Um, and the reason probably why you haven't seen them is because they're really hard to find. Yeah, I don't remember those. I do yeah. remember a few that were like the shorts built in and those right. were great for like the maximum sun coverage. Yeah. They were a little hard. The one we had was hard to get over the arms. It was kind of tight. Okay. But once they were in it, you felt really good from a UV protection standpoint. Yeah. I just feel like for little girls, especially, and I guess, I mean, really for girls and boys, what I have mostly seen are the shirt Mm -hmm. rash guards that have no zipper. And like Sarah was saying, I mean, they're so tight. Yes. So, um, I recently purchased this adorable bathing suit for Anna Lee, but it is that same style where it's the super tight mm-hmm. neck um, shirt. So I was like, well, I, you know, come hell or high water, like she will be wearing this mm-hmm. shirt because it is so cute. Um, but how am I going to do this? And so I figured, well, why don't I just take it to um, a seamstress and get a zipper put in? Oh, and you did? And I did. Well, okay. So then I called around, um, to find out, okay, who can do this? And, um, this one place said, oh, well, we actually can't do that because you need a special machine for nylon. Yeah. That, I was wondering if the material would be a problem. Yeah. So I'm glad I didn't drive there first and then discover, oh, sorry, they mm-hmm. can't do this. Um, but then I went to the local dry cleaners and I just happened to have it in my car. And I said, can you add a zipper to this? And they said, sure, no problem. That's amazing. Yeah. So now I have to confess what I did one time with, it was that, that UV skins brand. Do you know that brand? Um, It's not particularly like cute or high end, but it's good sun coverage. They have them at Costco sometimes and stuff. It's UV skins and skins has a Z. Okay. So, um, the girls had matching long sleeve rash guards and they were almost like wet seat, wet suit material, like that thicker, almost like a neoprene. They were great quality, but the necks were so tight Mm -hmm. and I just took scissors and I cut like a three inch slit down the back where you would have like not a full zipper, but just a few (laughs) inches. Uh And it actually was fine because the material didn't fray. So like I just opened up that neck and from the front you couldn't see because their hair was down and stuff. Yeah. And this was when they were like two and six or whatever. Yeah. Um, and it's because neither neither of them wanted to wear it because it was too, too hard tight. to get on and off. Um, and it was a great rash guard otherwise. Right. So, and kids heads. I mean, sometimes, right. sometimes relative to their little relative necks. To their yeah. body. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, their heads are yeah. disproportionately large sometimes. Um, well, that's the real cost cutting yeah. technique. It's just <laughs> yeah, uh, but take it, it might not work it. for everything. And these weren't like particularly cute or expensive. I just, I just didn't want them to go to waste. I wanted them to be able to wear them because for beach days. Exactly. And so my cost cutting comes in because you can extend the life of last summer's rash guard maybe. Um, or, you know, you get that expensive one that isn't a zipper friendly one and, um, you can use it. Yeah. Love it. Good one. Okay. And then, um, last thing I will talk about is a little success that we've been having with Anna Lee, my three and a half year old with what we call her morning routine. And, um, it's just one, she's reached developmentally enough independence where she can anticipate and know a series of steps to take in the morning and half of them she can do independently. Half of them need, you know, as much sort of disciplined, stay with it, like focused attention from me. But, um, you know, she can name off all of the steps in her morning routine every day. She asks me, mama, are we going to do our morning routine before breakfast? Or can I do my morning routine after breakfast? So what is her routine? Okay. So, um, she gets up in the morning independent from me and she will take off her pull up, go to the bathroom, take off her pajamas and get dressed. That's, that's all on her own. Amazing. She will leave her pull up on the floor of the bathroom and she will also leave her pajamas there. Um, I'm trying to get her to just automatically put her pull up on actually the stairs landing because listeners, if you've been listening for a while, you know that I'm not a diaper genie fan. And so her pull ups and any poopy diaper literally go directly outside but sometimes they stay yeah. on the landing. We use for a our while. La- our landing is like another laundry basket. Like <laughs> yeah. I, when the kids, I'm like, just put it on the landing. It's exactly, fine. it's close enough. Exactly. So she knows her pull up belongs there. Uh, when I tell her, put your pull up where it belongs, put your pajamas where it, where they belong, she will do that. Um, and then what else in her morning routine? Teeth mm-hmm. brushed, which she does in the morning by herself. Um, and I do it at night. Yeah, that's to make how we sure. do it too. Yeah, and then. Um, 
fix hair. And at the end of that, her little, you know, her little prize is a vitamin. Nice. Which are the gummy vitamins. And so that's kind of the carrot that I always use as sort of the incentive. I'm like, okay, no, sorry. You can't get your vitamin until we finish, you know, your morning routine. Right. Oh, and she, she makes her bed, which she struggles with. And that's amazing. You're killing it. Well, I'm, I'm kind of a, um, a little OCD with, with house management, Mm -hmm. you know? So I just want to ingrain these things early and I'm a morning bed maker since I stopped working full time. Uh Uh-huh. Because, I mean, everything is just so visually chaotic. If I can have one yeah. thing that is just my I, own. I like to make my bed, too, but I'm kind of inconsistent about Like, I, sometimes I do it right away. Other times I do it later when I'm straightening up the house. And sometimes I might never do it. But I do I do like a made bed. But I'm not. I, I don't do it at the same time every day. That's awesome. That's yeah. A, that's a big success. I yeah. Think. So morning routine. Love it. Um, okay. Well, this was fun. And, um, everything that Katie and I mentioned, if there was anything will be at the momhour.com and Katie will be back with you in a month or so. Sounds good. Hi friends, Megan here. I wanted to let you know about a new podcast I've just launched called the tease made. Think of it as a weekly cozy conversation with me over your favorite hot beverage on topics like wellness, creativity, family, hospitality, and more. Just look for The Teas Made with Megan Francis wherever you get your podcasts or head to theteasmade.com to find all those episodes. The Teas Made is your reminder to take a little break from the busyness of life. So come on in and get comfy. The Teas Made. The Mom Hour is brought to you by partners like The Essential Calendar. The Essential Calendar makes beautiful, minimalist, poster-sized calendars that show an entire season at a glance so you can see and plan for the big picture. If you're looking ahead to 2024 and have big plans you want to see all in one place, visit theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour. You'll save 10% off your purchase when you visit that link or use code themomhour at checkout. Again, that's 10% off our favorite seasonal calendars at theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour.